I bet you didn't know what the Tasmanian tiger sounded like. Sound of high-pitched yip, almost bird-like. Sound of guttural coughs and growls. We journey now to the island of Tasmania, a land once home to a creature of both beauty and ferocity, the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine. This elusive marsupial predator, with its distinctive stripes and powerful jaws, vanished from the mainland of Australia thousands of years ago, surviving only on the island of Tasmania. Picture, if you can, the cool, eucalyptus-scented air of the Tasmanian wilderness. The sun sets, casting long shadows across the landscape. The thylacine, a creature of the night, emerges from its den. It senses alert. A high-pitched yip, almost bird-like, scapes its lips, a sound used for communication with its kind. As it hunts, a series of guttural coughs and growls emanate from its throat, a chilling symphony of the night. But habitat loss and hunting drove the thylacine to extinction in the 20th century. It's haunting calls silence forever. Chapter 3. The Great Orc. A chorus on rocky shores. Our journey takes us now to the rocky shores of the North Atlantic, once teeming with the calls of a remarkable bird, the Great Orc. These shores, rugged and wild, were a sanctuary for this unique species, a place where they thrived and multiplied. This large, flightless bird, resembling a penguin in its upright posture, once thrived in vast colonies, its calls echoing across the waves. The great orc was a master of the sea, diving deep to catch fish and other marine life, its primary source of food. Imagine the rugged beauty of these northern shores, waves crashing against cliffs, the air thick with the scent of salt spray. The landscape was a dramatic backdrop to the life of the great auk, a bird perfectly adapted to its environment. The great auk, with its tuxedo-like plumage and clumsy gait on land, navigated these shores with ease. Despite its awkwardness on land, it was a graceful swimmer, using its wings to propel itself underwater with remarkable agility. Its call, a low, crooning sound, punctuated by barks and whistles, filled the air, a chorus of communication within the colony. These sounds were a vital part of their social structure, helping to maintain bonds and coordinate activities within the group. But the great orc's inability to fly made it easy prey for human hunters, who prized its feathers and meat. The bird's trusting nature and lack of fear towards humans only made it more vulnerable. Entire colonies were decimated in a matter of years. By the mid-19th century, the great auk was extinct, its once boisterous colonies silenced forever. The loss of the great auk serves as a poignant reminder of the impact humans can have on the natural world. Today, the memory of the great auk lives on in illustrations and stories, a symbol of what has been lost and a call to protect what remains. Efforts to protect other species from a similar fate have been inspired by the story of the great auk. Conservationists work tirelessly to ensure that the mistakes of the past are not repeated, striving to preserve the delicate balance of our planet's ecosystems. Today, protected coastal areas and wildlife reserves offer a glimmer of hope. These sanctuaries provide a safe haven for seabirds and other marine life, allowing them to thrive without the threat of human interference. The chorus of life on these rocky shores continues, a testament to the resilience of nature and the enduring legacy of the great auk. Chapter 4. The Woolly Mammoth. Echoes of the Ice Age. Our journey takes us back in time now to the Pleistocene Epoch, a time when giants roamed the Earth. This epoch, spanning from about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago, was marked by repeated glacial cycles where vast ice sheets advanced and retreated over the continents. It was a period of dramatic climatic changes that shaped the world we know today. The woolly mammoth, a behemoth of the Ice Age, traversed vast landscapes, its trumpeting calls echoing across the frozen plains. These majestic creatures, standing up to 13 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing as much as six tons, were among the most iconic animals of their time. Their long, curved tusks, which could grow up to 15 feet, were used for foraging through the snow and for defense against predators. Imagine a world locked in ice, glaciers carving their way across continents. These massive ice sheets, sometimes over a mile thick, sculpted the land, creating valleys, lakes, and other geological features that still exist today. The cold, harsh environment was a challenge for all living creatures, but it also fostered unique adaptations and survival strategies. The woolly mammoth, with its thick fur coat and massive tusks, was perfectly adapted to this harsh environment. 
Its fur, consisting of a long outer layer and a shorter, dense undercoat, provided insulation against the freezing temperatures. The mammoth's large, curved tusks were not only tools for survival, but also symbols of their strength and resilience. Its call, a deep, resonant rumble similar to that of its modern-day relative, the elephant, would have been an awe-inspiring sound. These vocalizations, which could travel long distances, played a crucial role in the social structure of mammoth herds. They used these sounds to communicate with each other, to maintain group cohesion and to express emotions. These calls, used for communication, for attracting mates, for warning of danger, were a vital part of mammoth society. The social bonds within a herd were strong, with individuals relying on each other for protection and support. The matriarchal structure, similar to that of modern elephants, ensured that knowledge and survival skills were passed down through generations. But as the climate warmed and humans hunted these magnificent creatures, their numbers dwindled. The end of the Ice Age brought about significant environmental changes, reducing the mammoth's habitat and food sources. Additionally, early humans, equipped with advanced hunting tools and strategies, posed a new threat to these giants. The last mammoths vanished from the Earth just a few thousand years ago. Their trumpeting calls silenced, leaving only echoes in the fossil record. Today, their remains, preserved in the permafrost and displayed in museums, offer us a glimpse into a world long gone. These fossils not only tell the story of the mammoths, but also provide valuable insights into the history of our planet and the forces that have shaped it. Chapter 5 the passenger pigeon, a symphony of the skies, silenced. Our final journey takes us to the skies of North America, once darkened by the sheer number of a single bird species, the passenger pigeon. These birds were not just a part of the landscape, they were the landscape. Their presence was so overwhelming that they became an integral part of the ecosystem, influencing everything from the growth of forests to the behavior of other animals. These birds, once numbering in the billions, formed vast flocks that stretched for miles, their calls a deafening symphony of life. Imagine standing beneath a sky so filled with birds that the sun itself was obscured, the air vibrating with the sound of their wings and calls. It was a natural spectacle unlike any other, a living, breathing cloud of avian life. Imagine the awe-inspiring sight of these flocks, a river of birds flowing across the sky, their wings beating in unison. This river of life was a crucial part of the natural world, a force of nature that shaped the environment in profound ways. The sheer number of birds created a dynamic, ever-changing landscape in the sky, a testament to the power and beauty of nature. The passenger pigeon, with its sleek, streamlined body and swift flight, was a marvel of nature. Its ability to navigate and maneuver through the air with such grace and speed was a sight to behold. These birds were not just numerous, they were also incredibly adapted to their environment, a perfect example of nature's ingenuity. Their calls, a cacophony of coos, whistles and clucks, filled the air, a testament to their incredible numbers. This symphony of sounds was more than just noise. It was a vital part of the ecosystem, a constant reminder of the interconnectedness of all life. The presence of these birds was a sign of a healthy, thriving environment. But habitat destruction and relentless hunting decimated their populations. The forests that once provided them with food and shelter were cut down, and the birds were hunted in staggering numbers. This relentless pressure from human activities proved too much for the passenger pigeon, leading to a rapid decline in their numbers. The last passenger pigeon died in captivity in 1914, marking the extinction of a species once thought to be inexhaustible. This tragic end serves as a stark reminder of the impact humans can have on the natural world. The loss of the passenger pigeon was not just the loss of a species, but the loss of a vital part of the ecosystem, a piece of the natural puzzle that can never be replaced. The skies, once alive with their symphony, fell silent. The absence of the passenger pigeon left a void in the natural world, a silence that speaks volumes about the fragility of life. As we look up at the empty skies, we are reminded of the importance of preserving the natural world, of protecting the delicate balance that sustains all life on Earth. The story of the passenger pigeon is a cautionary tale, a call to action to ensure that such a tragedy never happens again. Pause 3 S. Chapter 6. The Dodo. The Dodo's Silent Island. Our final destination takes us to the lush island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean, home to one of the most iconic symbols of extinction, the dodo. This flightless bird, 
with its distinctive appearance and unique call, was once a vital part of its island ecosystem. The dodo was more than just a bird, it was a symbol of the unique biodiversity of Mauritius. Standing about three feet tall, with a large beak and a tuft of curly feathers, the dodo was perfectly adapted to its island home. It foraged on fallen fruits and nested on the ground, living a peaceful life free from predators until the arrival of humans. Imagine the dense forests of Mauritius echoing with the dodo's call, a sound now lost to time. This call was a symbol of the island's natural harmony, a unique melody that played a crucial role in the ecosystem. The dodo's presence influenced the growth of certain plants, contributing to the island's ecological balance. But the arrival of humans in the 17th century brought drastic changes. The introduction of new animals, habitat destruction, and relentless hunting led to the rapid decline of the dodo population. Within a few decades, this unique bird was driven to extinction. The last dodo was seen in the late 1600s, marking the end of an era. The extinction of the dodo serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of isolated ecosystems. The loss of this bird was not just the loss of a species, but the loss of an integral part of Mauritius's natural heritage. The forests, once alive with the dodo's call, fell silent, leaving an echo of what once was. As we reflect on the story of the dodo, we are reminded of the importance of protecting the unique and delicate ecosystems around the world. The dodo's silent island is a testament to the impact humans can have on the natural world and a call to action to prevent such tragedies in the future. The dodo's story is a silent plea from the past, urging us to cherish and protect the diverse life forms that share our planet. It is a reminder that every species has a role in the intricate web of life and that the loss of one can have far-reaching consequences. Let the memory of the dodo inspire us to be better stewards of the earth, to ensure that the symphony of life continues to play uninterrupted for generations to come. Chapter 7. The Thylacines Vanished How. Our journey now takes us to the rugged wilderness of Tasmania, an island off the southern coast of Australia. Here, in the dense forests and open plains, lived a creature whose very existence seemed almost mythical, the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine. This carnivorous marsupial, with its distinctive striped back and dog-like appearance, once roamed freely across Tasmania's wild landscapes. Imagine the eerie beauty of Tasmania's forests, shrouded in mist, with the haunting howl of the thylacine echoing through the trees. This sound was a reminder of the untamed spirit of the island, a call that resonated with the mystery and majesty of the natural world. The thylacine was not just a predator, it was a vital part of the island's ecosystem, playing a crucial role in maintaining the ecological balance. But the arrival of European settlers in the 19th century marked the beginning of the end for the thylacine. Habitat destruction, competition with introduced species, and relentless hunting decimated their population. By the early 20th century, the thylacine was on the brink of extinction. The last known thylacine died in captivity at the Hobart Zoo in 1936 marking the end of a species that had once thrived in Tasmania's wilds. The extinction of the thylacine is a stark reminder of the impact humans can have on the natural world. The forests of Tasmania, once alive with the thylacine's howl, have fallen silent, leaving only memories and a few grainy photographs as evidence of their existence. This loss is not just the disappearance of a species, but the silencing of a unique voice in the symphony of life. As we reflect on the story of the thylacine, we are reminded of the importance of preserving the delicate balance of our ecosystems. The thylacine's vanished howl is a call to action, urging us to protect the diverse and fragile life forms that inhabit our planet. It is a plea from the past, a reminder that we must act now to prevent such tragedies in the future. Let the memory of the thylacine inspire us to be vigilant stewards of the earth, ensuring that the voices of the wild continue to be heard resonating through time for generations to come.